Hello friends, today we are going to see the unit number 2 in that measure of dispersion. Okay. So, your dispersion is a measure of the variation of the item, the degree to which the numerical data tends to spread above an average value is called the variation and the dispersion of the data. Dispersion is a measure of extent to which individual item varies. A measure of variation or the dispersion describes the degree of scattered shown by the observation and it uh, and is usually measured as an average deviation about some central value. The measurement of a uh, scatteredness of the mass of figure uh, in the series about an average is called as your measure of variation or the dispersion. So, in that first we are going to see first that is what your range. Now, what do you mean by range? The range is the simplest measure of the dispersion. It is a rough measurement of a dispersion. It depends upon only the extreme values item. Okay, only the extreme values and not on all the item. It does not tell us anything about the distribution of the value in the series relative to a typical value that's your range is what your range is equals to largest value minus smallest value okay it is a relative measure of dispersion you can denote it as what r is equals to r is equals to l minus s where your coefficient of range is equals to L minus S means what? The largest value minus smallest value divided by largest value plus smallest value. Okay, so we'll solve one example based on this. So the data is given. Find the range of weight weights of seven student from the following. Okay, so this is the data available. This is the individual data. Okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to range is equals to what? Largest minus value minus smallest value. So, in this distribution, your largest value is what? 43 and the smallest value is 27. So, we are going to subtract these two values. So, the this is your formula and we are going to subtract 43 minus 27. You will get range as what? 16. Okay. Now, next we are going to find the coefficient of range. So, your coefficient of range is equals to largest value minus smallest value divided by largest value plus smallest value. So, we know that our largest value is 43 minus smallest value is 27. So, 43 minus 27 divided by 43 plus 27, okay, which is equals to 16 by 17 and the final answer is 0 0.23. Okay. So, this is about the range. Your range is only depend upon the extreme values of the distribution. We are not going to include the in between values. Okay. We are only dependent upon the uh, extreme values of your distribution. That is your smallest value and the largest value. Then next topic we have as interquartile range. Okay. Now, as the name suggests interquartile range, your distribution is dependent upon your interquartile range will be depend on the middle portion of the distribution. Okay. So, the interquartile range is also called as your mid spread. Okay. Measures the spread within the middle half of the values in the data set. So, as to minimize the influence of outliers. Okay. So, we are not going to include the extreme values okay, in the calculation of the range. So, your interquartile range is denoted by IQR which is equals to Q3 minus Q1. Now, we know what do you mean by Q3 and Q1. Q3 is your upper quartile okay, and Q1 is your lower quartile. Okay, or you can say third quartile and the first quartile. Okay, so this is what your interquartile range. This, uh, if we plot one line, okay, in middle you will have your Q2 means what your median. Okay, this is your starting value, or you can say lowest value. This is the highest value or the ending value of the distribution. In between you will have your Q1 first quartile and the third quartile. Your interquartile range will. De, uh, denote this area okay so we'll see how to calculate that also after that you have quartile deviation 
So, quartile deviation is the half distance between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. It in indicates the average amount by which the two quartiles differ from the median. Okay, so your quartile deviation is denoted by Q D and it is equals to what Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2 as it is what it is an average. Okay, it is going to indicate the average. So, Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. After that, coefficient of quartile deviation, coefficient of quartile deviation is equals to what Q3 minus Q1 divided by Q3 plus Q1. So, we are going to solve an example based on this. So, this is your example. They have said what calculate the semi interquartile range and quartile coefficient from the following data. Okay, so in the table, uh, you have age in years. You can denote it as X. Okay, and the number of member that is what F. Now this data is what kind of data? This is your uh, discrete data. Okay, so the age are like 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And the number of member are like uh, 3, 61, 132, 1 by 3, 140, likewise. Okay. So, we need to find for the interquartile range and the quartile coefficient, we need to find what your Q1 value and Q3 value. Now, if you want to find Q1 and Q3, first you are going to find the cumulative frequency. Okay. Now, you know how to find cumulative frequency. We are going to arrange the data in a tabular format in a vertical fashion. Okay. So, first we are going to, we're going to find the less than cumulative frequency. So, first we are going to write 3 as it is. Okay. So, 3, 3 plus 61. So, 3 plus 61 is a 64. That is your next cumulative frequency. So, 64 plus 132 it is 196. 196 plus 153 is equals to 349. Likewise, we are going to find this cumulative frequency column. Okay. So, what is your total number of members? Your 543 is what? Summation of F. Okay. Means what? Your N. Okay. Now, as this is what your discrete series, so we are going to apply the formulas for Q1 and Q3 for the discrete series only. Okay. So, your Q1 is equals to what? Size of n plus 1 divided by fourth item. Now, you know n, n is what? Summation of frequency and what is your summation of frequency? 5, 4, 3 plus 1 divided by 4. Okay. Fourth item. So, here you have 5, 4, 3 plus 1 divided by 4. So, your final answer is what? 1, 3, 6. Okay. Now, this is not your Q1. We found only the position of your Q1. So, at the posi 1, 6th posi 1, 3, 6th position, you will have your Q1. Okay. Now, where to find this 1, 3, 6? You are going to find your 1, 3, 6 over here. So, it says what from 0 to 3, it, the values lies in age of, uh, sorry, in 20 years, okay, from 4 to 46, the age is 30, okay, from 65 to 196, the age is what, 40. So, your 136 lies in this class. So, you can consider 40 as what, your first quartile, okay. Okay, this is as what, your first quartile. Q1. Okay, so 40 years is what your first quartile. Likewise, we're going to find Q2. Now, what is the formula for Q2? 3n plus 1 divided by 4. Okay, again n is 5, 4, 3. So 3 into 5, 4, 3 plus 1 divided by 4. Okay. After the calculation, you'll get the value as what? 408. Okay. Now, where to find this 408? Your 408 will be over somewhere here. Okay. Why? At 50, your range is end at what? 349. Okay. So, your 408 will lie in this. Okay. So, Q3 will be what? 60. Okay. Now, we have we are Q1 and Q3. Now, we are going to write the formula for your inter semi interquartile range. Okay. So, semi interquartile range is equals to what? Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2, where your Q3 is what? 60 minus 
q1 is what 40. So, 60 minus 40 divided by 2 which is equals to 20 by 2. So, 10 years it will be what your intercortile or your quartile deviation or you can say semi intercortile range ok. Now, quartile coefficient is equals to what q3 minus q1 divided by q3 plus q1 means what 60 minus 40 divided by 40. 60 plus 40 which is equals to 0 0.2 this is what your coefficient of quartile thank you